Hello everyone, I am Adam and thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Strixhaven Chaos. This is episode four, am I counting right? Mm -hmm. Yes, episode four. So tonight is the halfway point in our eight part series and I can't wait to see what happens with this lovable ragtag band of misfits who have come together to study not to party to study at Strixhaven at the different colleges um, I believe that we're getting to choose colleges soon all of that is going to be happening so thank you for joining us I want to make sure that we give a special call out to our incredible returning sponsor Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms <laughs> We're fans for we, reasons. We need to do like a dissonant whispers. Uh, <laughs> <That's true>. next <laughs> time. Right. Like uh, Idol but, Champions uh, is always watching. Idol Champions is always here with you here. Do not fight the Idol Champions. Give into it. Enter the chess code. Claim the chess code. That was your evil oh, ASMR so for today. <laughs> that, that was uh, creepy for me, especially with the stream delay. Um, and so. <laughs> So here we go. Um, so uh, I'm going to let everybody introduce themselves and we're going to save V-Day for the end where he can just jump us right into the action. I am Adam Bradford. I'm the CEO at DemiPlan. You can find me on Twitter at BadEyeAdam. And also check out, uh, we have just released the first part of phase two of early access for Pathfinder Nexus. So that is live at pathfindernexus.com. This is the game compendium, the start of that with listings for spells and items and creatures and so on. Very, very snappy, very easy to use, very convenient if you're looking for those kinds of things for Pathfinder. And I encourage you to check that out when you get a chance. And we will go to Lauren next. Oh, hi, I'm Lauren Urban. I'm the content coordinator for Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. You can find me as Lauren on Twitter. I play Mal, the Owlin Ranger, who, if we survive this fight, is finally going to be able to pick a subclass, and I am excited. Also, I, I normally don't uh, talk about too much about the things that I'm doing, but a really exciting thing happened today. The podcast that I've been a part of for five ish years five six years we rebranded we renamed ourselves same same five people new name distinguished adventurers check us out thank you yay oh that's me to move things along <laughs> <laughs> had to get off mute and jen how about you hi i'm jen kretschmer you can find me on twitter as at dreamwisp you can find me streaming as dreamwisp jen um I am playing Nico Flox, who is your friendly neighborhood uh, Herringon Druid. I am a Circle of the Land Druid. Very fun and hope. Hi, I'm Hope Lavelle. You can follow me on Twitter at the Hope Lavelle. I am playing Impa Gravestone, your friendly Luxodon cleric, uh, Death Domain. <laughs> and last, not least, B. Dave Walters physically largest actually like i like jen and like any two of you combined not adam adam and yeah, i we're, wait, we're waiting comparably but any two of the rest <laughs> of you combined in any combination makes a me yes uh <laughs> b dave walters hi uh i think by now y'all know who i am so let's just get right into it when last we met you all were tasked, uh, you were attacked again during a performance by an owl bear, an artificial owl bear that sprang to life and fought bravely before returning back to its inanimate state. And upon inspection and investigation, you all found that it was covered by that same strange black liquid that is all over the other things that you've had come to life and attack you. There is something called an Eldritch Balm, which is used very commonly here on campus, and this seems to be somehow a twisted or corrupted version of that Eldritch Balm. You all took it to a Professor Totsky, who assured you that everything was going to be fine. Just take this vial of holy water, go out to the swamp of Sedgemoor, where the water that we make the Eldritch Balm comes from uh, is, is located, pour the holy water into the spring. I'm sure that will knock it right out. She was largely unconcerned that there was going to be anything unusual, although on occasion people have gone out to the swamps of Sedgemoor and 
practice some forbidden magic or things they're not supposed to do. Magical kids being magical kids. You all made your way out there uh, with Theo being completely convinced that Professor Totsky is the evil mastermind behind all of this, might I add. And very carefully and cautiously navigated your way through the alligators and snakes, uh, quicksand and other natural pitfalls here. When uh, someone, Nico, if memory serves correctly, talked to the birds about what was going on out here. And you were warned that there was a beast right up ahead where the spring was located. And upon having this pointed out to you, the mud began to bubble and roil as something very large began emerging from the mud in the muck and a scorpion the size of two horses reveals itself pinchers clanking in tail lashing outwards you realize if not for the intervention of this kind-hearted bird who promptly departs might i add you all very much would have been subjected to an ambush attack by the scorpion but now having seen it you get to roll initiative so have at it <laughs> oh wow Mm -hmm. So wait, are we rolling initiative now or did we do that last time? <laughs> uh, I have a previous initiative, but I think you all, we didn't roll last time. We did not roll initiative. We yeah. ended on yeah. the seeing the three eyes, I, I three rows of so. eyes. Three rows of eyes, which you now see are inset in the head of a very large scorpion. So yes, go ahead and give me initiative. I do love meeting friendly new animals. So... <laughs> Mal is very distracted by some friendly new animals. He has taken a, a liking to a lot of the lightning bugs that he can find around <laughs> in the swamp. And, oh, wow. Oh, wow. And and so uh, with a natural one, he got a four on his initiative. And oh, with no. a natural one, Theo is apparently going to the same place. Oh, both of you? That's, that's distracted two. with a four. Two wild magics right there, just right off the top there. Okay, oh, excellent. No. That's why Theo, Theo right. come look at this. Look at this bug. Look at the <laughs> lights up. Oh, not light up. I'm not you weren't surprised. Hey. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, you're so not supposed to be surprised, but all right. But that was what was. <laughs> we'll do the work a, for you. I, I just um, also like the record to show Theo's last one was a natural twenty, so you have brought balance to the force here <laughs> with this. Uh, Mel, what was that Time a total line. for Mel then, by the it way? It was a total of four. <clears throat> Perfect. Uh, I believe Mel has the higher, uh, higher decks of the two of you, correct? Uh, 16. Yeah. Yeah. That's perfectly fine. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Um, because uh, I, I use initiative or uh, intelligence for it, and I think that I have a higher intelligence, but I don't. What? No, I, oh, you definitely Theo doesn't do. want to go first. So. All right, perfect. If you're choosing to let uh, <laughs> Mel act first, fine. Uh, and Impa, what was it? Three. Oh my wow. goodness, all of you. Nico, Nico, you know, they're stuck in the mud here, Nico. Yeah. 17. Wow. Nico, so at least somebody's going before the monster. Excellent. I think the universe somebody rolled well. Although, um, yes, Nico, uh, you are up first. Oh, goodness. As you see, this giant scorpion has wriggled up out of the mud and muck. Uh, all of you give me a perception check. Uh, Nico, you can give me perception or survival, whichever is higher. I got a 23. 11. 16. 17. 16. 16. Anybody top 17? 23. Uh, Mal 23. Mal, you in particular, having struck an odd blend of completely being dumbfounded by all of this and yet still oddly perceptive of what's taking place. Maybe your knowledge of the stakes is what is causing you to hesitate here. This scorpion has the same reddish madness in its eyes that the frogs had. Um, it very much seems like it's under the influence of something. With, with that perception can i see any of the same black ooze icker stuff that was on the other creatures that either came to life or was on the the frogs it is all over the place and it is in the water it's literally oh. essentially um marinating in it yeah 
Ooh, d- don't eat that scorpion. That's not going to be good eating. This is not <laughs> this is not something you want to have for lunch. Scorpions, anyway. <laughs> However, Nico, it is your turn. Perhaps we should just. Uh... Oh goodness. Um... Let's go ahead and slow it down, I suppose, with an entangle. Okay. Uh, what is the save it needs Strength to be? Strength 13. It actually makes it. There is an abundance of weeds and vines and detritus that reach up and start to wrap around this thing, and it just sort of shakes its body and rips out of all of them. Okay. At the bare minimum, it becomes difficult terrain. Okay. So it'll slow it down, if nothing else. Perfect. Um, and then as a bonus action, I'm going to look around and I am going to transform. Mm-hmm. I like where this is headed. What do I want to transform into, though? Oh, goodness. I had this all planned out and now I'm forgetting. <laughs> It's it's well, it yes, I don't. like that sometimes. I don't yes. think I actually can do a, yeah, a scorpion no. yet. <laughs> but that would uh, be yeah. yeah. This would be the time for it, you know, scorpion on scorpion violence. Yes. Mm-hmm. I yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not gonna uh, rush you because the scorpion's going next. So Pende, what you do here? <laughs> you know what? My... I'm going to transform myself into a giant wolf spider, hoping that I will handle poison better. Perfect. Giant Hang on. wolf spider. Uh, but it doesn't actually handle poison better, does it? No. <laughs> Whoops. It was worth a shot. Womp womp. But, but, but was, now you got so, spider climbing. So Nico, thinking about the way that uh, mathematically, uh, exponentially, we need to expand, uh, legs begin to sprout out in a, uh, a in a mathematical pattern. Everything is perfectly to the corners of the octagon. And... <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. All right. Uh, It is the scorpion's turn. Uh, It does start to trudge forward through the mud and the muck still partially slowed down. However, um, it is a terrible creature. Whoa. I'm going to roll some of these new dice. Ooh, those chunky babies are heavy. Um, May I move forward to to engage it? Absolutely. Your intent is to get in front of it? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, Hope. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe something good's about to happen. Maybe something bad's about to happen. I rolled one of the dice and it is cocked. Do you want me to re-roll it or keep the results? Re-roll. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you just shook a natural twenty from stabbing her with the tail. Oh! So yeah, that was the that was the right decision. <laughs> Because that spider was about to get lit up, but I was like, hmm, hmm, hmm. Uh, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately or unfortunately, Nico, two, well, I'm almost certain, no, I am certain, two of its attacks are going to land, uh, but it is going to be the two claws and not the tail, so your friend has helped you with this. Uh, give me, uh, an either athletics or acrobatics as the scorpion strikes you with both of its claws and is attempting to hold you. So I will get athletics or acrobatics. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I should be rolling with its bonus, shouldn't I? So yep. Dex plus 16. No, that would have hurt like a lot, like a lot, a lot if that 20 on the tail went off. So <laughs> I was like, Why'd you put that on me, man? <laughs> I was fully prepared to be like, okay. You know, so, yeah. Uh, it's no, no, no good. Yeah. That's a fail. Uh, That's a, a six. It strikes you twice for six points each. However, you are grappled, and you all see that it reaches out with its claws and grabs onto this wolf spider and attempts to sting with its tail but misses wildly. However, it is very much engaged with Nico. Uh, Mal. Uh, apparently everything else in the swamp reacts alternatively like oh, what <laughs> before we get down to the four that is mal and it uh, is your did, turn did rampart have anything to do oh i forgot rampart was here oh you know let's rampart can move a little faster here actually uh <laughs> impa 
You see, Rampart is sort of standing there with the sword in their hand, kind of unmoving, and they turn and they look at you, and they're like, oh, you, I, I should, um, would you, would you, would you like me to, um... No, no, you don't, no, Rampart, you know, you do whatever I, makes you feel I, comfortable, I, uh, well, I, but my I, friend over there is but, dying, but, uh, just Do saying. I have a vested interest in seeming impressive to you, um, <clears throat> and Rampart... You did come all the way out here. If, I suppose I did. It would be, uh, the, the good leader leads from the front. Um, and Rampart steps up and swings and just clangs off the back of this thing. <laughs> Clang! <laughs> but they are up and great. With the, they, they very much hit it and then turn and look at you, Impa, and then sort of like rearrange. And they're like, uh, uh, should take it the other way next time. Um, <clears throat> should be, uh, but uh, Impa, uh, do try your best. And you gain a D6 Bardic Inspiration from Rampart, uh, Impa. <laughs> uh, however, Mal, it is now your turn. All right, little buddy, I gotta go to work. I'm gonna pull out both short swords and I'm gonna fly into uh, melee with this thing and let's start slashing. Um, if, if I can do cold shots, I'm going for the tail. I wanna cut this tail off, it looks awful. Between, uh, so here's the thing. If you want to do a call shot, you will roll with disadvantage. However, uh, because it is grappled, uh, because to grapple, you are also grappled and also flanked, you would have advantage. So I would say you basically could do a call shot, even roll, or roll with advantage and sneak attack as normal. Um, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I guess go you're for sneak attack tail. no matter what, but yeah, okay. I, mm -hmm. I sadly do not get sneak attack as I am a ranger. Um, ah. but, but if I hit it, it becomes my favorite foe. So I, I'm gonna fly towards it. I see this, this tail mm -hmm. doing, doing the awful thing. I'm like, I gotta cut that off and mount that on my wall. So here we go. Be even rolled then. Uh, well, the, that first is a 10. I don't think a 10 hits. That is not enough. This thing is surprisingly agile. I mean, its tail alone is about the size of Theo, but as you swing at it, it's... <laughs> All right. Here, mm -hmm. here, here comes my other attack. Oh, that's better. That's a 19. That is enough to hit it. Awesome. So it is now mm -hmm. my favorite foe, which means I get an extra D4 onto this. Um... So it's going to take seven piercing damage as I jab it with the sword and I try to get the stinger off. You stab it and you hear it clicks and hisses uh, when you stab it. Its sting is not incapacitated, but you definitely have heard it. Uh, how much damage was that? Sorry. Uh, let, let, let's see what it said. Five, seven. Seven points of damage. Excellent. Yeah. Perfect. Anything else from Mel? Um, no, that was my bonus action, my action, my movement. I'm going to stay right there, and I'm going to line up for the next shot, and I'm going to go, all right, Rampart, a uh, uh, spider, um, uh, Nico, Nika spider. So we're going to have to come up with, like, cool names for you or something. But, like, oh, we got this. We got this. And I sort of flail a little bit. <laughs> uh, Waving. Thumbs up. <laughs> Theo, uh, it is your turn. Why is it my turn? Uh, <laughs> so, um, Theo is going to... Is there a way that Theo can attempt to de-grapple Miko from the Scorpion? Like, is yeah. there a way that he can try to grapple nico in order to get nico out of the grapple you essentially have to pass the same grapple check essentially okay, that, uh, and okay, then you okay. would, yeah mm -hmm. so in that case but uh, i would the, say it, i would say in this case it's only athletics and not acrobatics because you would be basically yeah. muscling it not squirming but yes you to could to totally fine um mm -hmm. and so uh theo is going to um you see that he uh pulls out his spell book and he's frantically trying to he's like, oh, oh, okay Hopefully I remember the moves and he starts doing something. And then you see that he starts spinning around like ballroom dancing almost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as a bonus action is going to cast um, kinetic jaunt, which mm -hmm. is going to uh, increase his walking speed. He can no longer uh, provoke opportunity attacks for up mm -hmm. to one minute with concentration. Mm -hmm. And he can move through the space of another creature and it doesn't count as difficult terrain. Wow. Um, and so um, he is going to just kind of saunter up uh, to where this is. And mm -hmm. you see him doing uh, complicated, very precise science, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of moves. 
and um, he's going to attempt to, um, you know, rest Nico free and then keep moving himself without drawing the opportunity attack, but hopefully positioning Nico uh, in a place where she can continue to attack the scorpion on its flank. Perfect. Roll it. All right. Um, let's see. Where am I at here? Uh, uh, 13. Believe it or not, that is enough. Uh, yes. you know, uh, as you grab and twist, there, there's a moment that you're like, mm, I think Nico's spine might give before that the That is not how I planned and, that. And then boom, but she does shoot out <laughs> into your hands and you are able to get it as the claws just sort of snap closed and it looks around confused. All right, and uh, Theo just uh, says, uh, there you go, sister, and uh, pl plops her down still in melee range and then continues to spin a couple more times and uh, the rest of his movement, five or ten feet, whatever it is, to get out of melee range of the scorpion. Give me a perception check, Theo. Uh, uh Ten. Uh, a lot's happening. No, you just feel yeah. pretty good about yourself. Yeah, yeah that's I, I do. I feel great. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, All those lessons are starting to pay off. Uh, Impa, it is your turn. Um, uh, Impa, stepping back to kind of like look at this thing that Theo has just done. Oh, amazing. Mm -hmm. Quite. I'm very impressed. Um, but Nico still seems like she could use a little help so um shield of faith she's just gonna like like use her trunk to like like a bubble appears out of her trunk like a little iridescent bubble and it like lands and creates a sheen around nico um so you get a just to make sure you know you get a plus two bonus for your to your ac thank you um and then kind of looking over at uh Rampart, she's just gonna <clears throat> kind of adjust herself and be like, all right, it's, it's time to take this seriously. Um, mm. You know, put put together things that you've practiced. Um, all right. And you just see like the, the energy around just kind of darken a little bit as she, she looks up and she looks at this creature and just says, Alfred, do the thing. No, it's Alfred, Alfred, do the thing. And you just hear this large tongue as I told the dead. Perfect. So, what is your current cell? We did not make your save. Absolutely not. So yes, yay! you 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 go ahead and roll your damage. Uh, because it is missing hit points, right? So it'll take yes. 1d12. So that's 11 points. Oh, 11 of points of damage. damage. Perfect. You all hear this bell ring out and the scorpion hisses violently. Uh, perfect. Anything else from uh from Impa? Rampart, oh, yeah, you, wonderful, wonderful, quite well played. Uh, you attacked its weak will and uh, <laughs> running back towards the scorpion. Perfect. Uh, that brings us back around to the top uh, with Spider Nico. Spider Nico is going to go in. Um, there are not specific mechanics in here for using a web, for casting any sort of web. Yeah, it's very weird. Uh, the 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 way I, have, I yeah. Oh, go ahead. You have a do you have a mechanic for it? I just I basically use the web spell. Okay. I spent a lot of me. time as a as a druid barbarian. That I works shot for a lot me. Of spider webs in my time. I yeah. think let's 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 keep this thing from from going anywhere, and mm -hmm. I will uh, run around encircling it, tangling its limbs, tying down it down its stinger. Mm -hmm. so that it cannot uh attack anyone uh all right what's the save it needs to make for that i don't it's know. whatever your dc is so actually uh, my spell dc is 13. 13 i'm almost certain it is a dex thing Do -do -do. yep it's dex unfortunately this is a particularly spry scorpion uh that is, shakes off the webs uh as you were casting it towards it um, anything else for you, Nico? Um, nope. Perfect. Uh, Theo. 
Uh, uh, is it Mal? Uh, no, well, it the is. Creature. Oh, okay. it's the creature. Oh, it's coming at me. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the creature. <laughs> What's your AC, Theo? Uh, it is 13. <gasps> <Major winner. laughs> oh, no. It's that bad. Huh? Oh, I'm okay. I, I, I am protected by the gods. I feel a surge of, of wild energy. We're about to find out. Uh, oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I just got another natural 20 on the oh. tail again. Jeez. I call BS. So, <laughs> so, Theo, give me a con save. Uh, 17. Mm. Uh, that is not terrible. Um, Pretty give good, me, I think. G give me uh, a deck save as well. This can be. Uh, sorry. Uh, um, hey, are you just going to keep going through them until I fail? No. Something? Oh no. A lot of <laughs> a lot of stuff's about to happen. Uh, give me give me acrobatics or athletics. We're just finding out the sum total of what's about to happen. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Thirteen on athletics. Uh, you do escape the grapple. Uh, important point of clarification. How many hit points you got currently, Theo? <laughs> Thirty. <laughs> Well, okay. That's a lot. You yeah. will see it claws at Theo twice, and he seems to be escaping as its tail slams into you, which also feels like it's going to be fine for a second, and then the feeling of flames going through your body and through every blood vessel and igniting them on fire with poison goes through you, Theo as it hits you for 48 points of damage. <laughs> oh! And you all see Theo stands rigid for a second, and the scorpion flits its tail, and his body careens into the corrupted spring and splish, goes through the water. Oh! And rotates back around and looks at the rest of you with its six eyes. Oh! Mal, it is your turn. What about his wild magic? Okay, so yeah, I guess I guess I need to know for many reasons. Is my ma wild magic going off? Do I feel it about to happen? Because you know, I, I think might... this would be an optimal moment for your wild magic as the chaos of this place starts to take over and you feel the mystical training that you've been working at so diligently is rising to meet your anger and getting out of hand. Okay. Um, do I have any idea what's about to happen? None. You just feel heat. All burning. right. Just, but the water around your ankles is starting to bubble. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> uh, I just watched my roomie go flying away and there's nothing I can do about that. And I'm hoping that some a uh, beautiful person is going to come out of nowhere and feed him a health potion like it has happened to me so many times. But I can't help with that. So I've got both swords and I'm just going in for the scorpion because I need to kill this thing and avenge my friend. Um, Make your attack. I, I have I have one question before mm -hmm. all of this happens. Mm -hmm. Um I had had advantage because I was flanking. I was going to mm -hmm. be at disadvantage if I wanted to do a cold shot. So it would Correct. be uh, it would have been would have been a push, yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I was considering casting Zephyr Strike on myself, which would give me advantage. Would I get the advantage back? Yes. Awesome. I'm gonna do that. So you watch as under uh, Mal's breath, he starts to speak. Um, yeah, he's gonna speak in Goblin. I think he learned this from gob from a from a Goblinoid, and he starts to uh, grab both short swords, and he sheathes one as the other lights up, and he means for it to to light up with radiant damage, uh, and it will. But his anger, his all of a sudden, his feathers are on fire, and he's gonna go in and attack, and I'll have advantage on this. Your hate has made you powerful. Yes, roll it. <laughs> well, that's a natural 20. <gasps> oh! oh! Like, I didn't even need the advantage. It just happened on the first one. I don't know what's going to happen with the wild magic surge, but here we go. Here we go. So uh, he's my favorite foe, and I get mm -hmm. Zephyr Strike. So there's going to mm -hmm. be a lot of damage happening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. the regular damage is 12. 
Mm-hmm. I get. Is that before or after the doubling? That's after the doubling, but uh-huh. then I get mm-hmm. another three for him being my favorite foe. Mm-hmm. And Zephyr Strike means I get force damage, which is usually 1d8, but this time it'll be 2d8. 2d8, yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and it roll amazingly. And that, so that's seven force damage on top of that. You cut a giant hole in this thing, and as you are swinging, that radiant damage begins to change and alter and erupt into flames as wild magic you did not intend goes off, and a fireball detonates point blank at the scorpion here. Uh, Roll the fireball damage, please, as it brightens up the night enough that it is difficult for you all to look at as this cone of flames shoots out. Quite okay. possibly disintegrating this thing. Let us find out. Uh, Big old six d six. Yeah, I've got to uh, do this manually because it's like I'm not playing a character that has fireball anymore. It's weird. I know who would do such a thing. Yeah. Uh, the chaos. Seventeen. <laughs> Seventeen fire damage. Um, I. I mean, I guess if it's a fireball is going off, it's got to make a save. But I have no. I mean, my DC is. It's, uh, it's still gonna be thirteen. And. Yeah. I rolled a nine and it had 15 hit points left. So Mal, you tell me what it looks like when you obliterate this thing. I I watch my roomie go flying into the muck and um, my eyes just light up with fire and anger because this is not the first friend that I've watched die. And I do the thing with the Zephyr Strike and I plunge my sword right into the back of its neck, right where two of the, the pieces of its armor are are just separated just enough. And at the last minute, when I think it's not dead yet, I say, you don't get to kill my friend. I'm here to protect my friends. You, you that's going to die. And I wrench the sword, but what actually happens is the fireball goes <laughs> off. And I think I'm just seeing red because he killed my friend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And chunks of scorpion hurtle in each direction into the night. And then after that, the swamp is absolutely silent. The animals aren't making noise. The bugs aren't making noise. It is like a shroud of death has come over the place. And I flick off the goop that's on my my short sword and sheathe it. And I say, nobody goes after my roomie. Except for me. I'm quite a good swimmer. And I'm going to dive after him. Can, can, he... can I describe the wild magic surge on my side? I need <laughs> you to roll. I need you to roll a D100 for me. And then oh, you absolutely it's... can. I oh, will say okay. Rampart is very ineffectively attempting to remove uh, pieces. Uh, hang on. Oh, oh no. Nico in the fireball um, was blasted backwards and out of her her uh, wild shape form, and she looks around to say, "Did you see? I did it! I did! I did the thing!" And I, you did! You yeah. did the thing, and it was awesome. Are we all taking that damage, by the way? That's all right. No, it's... Okay. no I'm because otherwise more Mal's... flavor because I wanted to be able to talk again. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. otherwise, also handle the fact that my brother just died. So sure. that's a thing. Well, yeah. Uh, Theo, I, I, I have one, one, uh, one other quick question. I just put there in the chat for you. Oh, okay. Um, sure. However, uh, Impa, yes, Rampart is very ineffectively attempting to take off pieces of armor to join you as Impa has plunged into the swamp in just in my own head cannon. Your little trunk is up over yes. the water. So you, <laughs> <laughs> style. So you can breathe. Uh, and yes, Theo, what happens uh, when Nico gets to the place in the swamp where your body was? All right, let me uh, let me make sure I'm looking at the right thing here. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, all right. Um, so that was what the percentage die was for, just yes. to clarify, right? Yes, okay, correct. Perfect. All right, uh, so um, you actually don't see anything. And what Theo sees is um, he sees for just a moment and he's just uh, kind of thinking to himself like, oh, what a strange sensation. And then the magical energies that have been touching all of us far too frequently in our time at Strixhaven, uh, he, he feels a surge and all of a sudden he starts to uh, rise up out of the water, almost like everything is rewinding. He's like, and, and everything just starts to rewind and rewind and rewind. 
And then all of a sudden he is kind of standing where he was when the scorpion attacked, but there's no longer a scorpion. And Theo is now a hill dwarf. What hey, who hill, are you? What does hill dwarf Theo look like? Hill dwarf Theo uh, looks um, kind of, um, you know, tawny skinned, um, you know, pr pretty, pretty tanned. And um, he has a very thick hair, mane like hair, a giant beard uh, coming down. Same kinds of braids that uh, Theo's Leonin beard uh, was uh, was essentially braided with. And then um, ultimately, uh, you see that like the the clothing that Theo was wearing, which was you know these formal robes, uh, the the really really floppy hat. Uh, the floppy hat is still there, but it's way too big for him now. As are all of the robes, and so they're kind of just hanging off of him in various places. And then you finally just see it fall off his shoulder, and it is a rather naked, stark naked dwarf uh, standing in front of you. Theo, somebody doubled the size of everything. The swamp is huge now. <laughs> Uh, I, I look something. up at the sky. Oh, goodness gracious me. Good, what, what, what has happened? What has happened? I have turned myself into a, to a dwarf. I can't, I can't find Theo in there anywhere. I don't know where he is. Impa, <gasps> is he, Rampart is making their way out into the swamp now. They're like, Impa, Impa, a strange naked dwarf has appeared. No, come come back. I, uh, I have to find but, Theo. But yes, Nico, you said you were. Nico was, starts Nico, anxiously looking up and around at the sky. What time of day is it? It's nighttime. You guys came after dark. What What's the moon look like? You know what? We're going to let fate decide what the moon looks like. Uh, Edie's new moon. New. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 Uh, um, Theo? Were you, were you, were you playing with magic again? Or did, did I did I do that with the 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 the, the cast the, when I changed in the? It was likely your magics that did this because I certainly did not do it. Oh, you're Theo. Hey, I, I you look good. I, do you want to be this? I mean, this looks cool. I like the beard. I like the hair. I mean, and I'm not one who really has anything to do with beards and hair, but I think this is this is good. It's well, better I mean, than I dead, had right? A beard and more hair before. Did you like me better then, or? Well, no. I mean, I like you. I like you alive. I he just now be... realizes that he is completely naked, and so he's like, <laughs> put, "Put these on." Um. They don't fit any longer. We'll wrap them around your waist and tie them. Or here, you, you can have the cloak. Do you, what, what? What do you want here? Can, can anyone explain what's happening to me? <laughs> Impa, while you were splashing around out there, your hand uh, hits something unusual. You find a book floating in the water. <gasps> oh, I grab it. Also, as you sort of like, now that some of the panic is setting off, as you look down, this black stuff is all over you now, Impa, and it is all in the water and in the spring. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get this book and I'm gonna get out right now. <laughs> hey, hey, Impa, were you the one who had the thing? The, the, the thing? The vial. The water. The, the holy water. Ooh, I think Impa was carrying it, yeah? Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, while you're in there, do the thing and then we'll we'll clean you off. Okay. You can do it while you're in there, Impa? Sure. <laughs> Sure enough, it is like dropping uh, dish soap into a greasy into a greasy sink. It hits and does. You see it move That's across. That's surface tension, kids. <laughs> uh, and even it comes off of you. Like it immediately goes back to. I mean, it's still swamp water, but it's it is the the original swamp water, not this uh, corrupted, corroded swamp water. It works instantly. Oh. And it almost feels like there's a tension that lifts here also. All the whole place just feels better. Oh, I think we did it. Are we done? Are we done here? Ramparts. Whoa, no, you were gonna... wonderful. I just... <coughs> um, I'm just going to go back to the shore if you don't mind. Uh, Impa, you're quite wonderful. Quite wonderful. I'm going <laughs> to 
walk over to mm -hmm. Theo and I'm going to say, okay, so just so we make sure this is, we're going to have to just start tracking this, you know, we're going to start the beginning of the moon cycle with you. And it's, cause maybe yours starts at the beginning of the moon cycle. So we'll track it on the calendar and we'll make sure, and we'll just be prepared. And it doesn't seem, I don't know. Are you, do you have claws? Do you have fangs? Anything that, that's dangerous to us? <laughs> Dwarven lycanthrope. <laughs> I mean, where do you expect her to go? <laughs> so it makes a, very, a very valid line of logic that is no worse than what actually happened. Yes. Which, just for the uh, record, the wild magic surge was a reincarnation spell. Uh, it is a form of resurrection that brings you back, but is something else. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does no one seem to care that I am no longer a Leonin? <laughs> I, I mean, I can, but I don't know what I can do I about it. I told you all this was a horrible idea to trace <laughs> out into this wilderness. Look, it, Why it would we ever leave the school? That, that long, it usually goes away by the morning. Also, technically, we're still in the school. I don't know why there's a swamp in a school, but here we are. Is it his book that I pulled out of the water? No, oh. it is not his book that you pulled out of the water. Uh, in it, you find um, an oil skin journal. Um, it, water damage has made a lot of it unreadable. But what you can reveal is it is a journal of someone that hates Strixhaven. It's Tom in oh. his <laughs> It's true. It's the <laughs> that's his name is not Tom. <laughs> it was it, it was it. It, yeah. <laughs> It's, it's Bob Ribble. <laughs> it's, I was about to say, yeah, it's a uh, Cedric Quandry, you know? No. <laughs> but it is very clear that someone consciously has been out here working to try um, an experiment with the life draining magic in the marsh and has been doing so for some time. It, basically, you realize this has been an experiment and an intentional one, expressly to hurt Strixhaven. My goodness, who, who do we tell? Who do we get this to? Rampa, what do you think? Uh, uh, <clears throat> um, we're not going to talk about the naked dwarf. Uh, fine. Uh, well, pro uh, Professor Totsky, I suppose, who gave us the holy water, might be a good place to start. I mean, this feels like the kind of thing we tell everyone, right? But like, we go tell there's someone, someone who... who wants to to come after the. Yeah, that seems this right to me. Is doesn't there a... seem like we should Is keep it to ourselves. No. A person uh, we should be talking to it, sort of each individual college has a headmaster um but uh there is not one person who is over all of strixhaven but uh there are people that you could tell that are in charge yes well look we we managed we, we got through it we knew we were going to be fine and we're going to be fine i mean you're shorter you're just about no one you're is almost fine. you're almost as hairy as you were it's it's you're fine it's fine and it'll go away in the morning and i'm not too concerned so we we did the spring things. We what should go back to the professor. To believe this will go away in the morning. And I look at Theo. That is completely different, and you know that it is. Uh, Looks I will... pretty same. <laughs> I will say, all things being equal. Uh, the the dean of Witherbloom would probably be the person you would tell first because this is on Witherbloom's campus. Uh, but you could go wherever you went. Um, it, yes, Mal. Considering it's the middle of the night, is there like emergency services? Is there like, you know, because I I assume we don't just know the dean of Witherbloom, so we'd probably have to no. go find. Uh, we need to find a qualified adult. Let's but, let's go find someone to tell them what happened. Maybe they can help with. Theo, if Theo wants, I mean, you know, maybe you'll like being a dwarf, and if not, then maybe they could make you the, the Leonin again. Uh, either way, like, this is not something that we should just sit on. Uh, I will say one, uh, let me just double check something here. Uh, I will say, um, Impa, the other thing that you take from this is uh, you def it definitely feels like the person was done with their experiment. The, this trying to mess up, um, trying to mess up the uh, Rose Stage Festival was their intentionally their last step of whatever they were doing here. That being said, two questions. Uh, one, it is your intent to tell the Witherbloom um, Dean what happened. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, I guess start with them and then. 
but spread the word. You know, yeah. you're, you're not trying to keep this to yourself. Second thing, Theo, do you try and seek out help getting restored to a Leonin, or do you try this dwarf thing out for a while? I feel very torn because <laughs> ultimately I know that one should be satisfied with who they are, but I feel like an outcast in the group now because all of us were anthropomorphic animals and now I am no longer an anthropomorphic animal. I am instead a regular humanoid. Well, well, or, or, and I'll wave over Nico and I'll put my arm around Nico and I'll put my arm around Theo and I'll say, or you just join the shorty club. <laughs> it's true. Oh, so and I kind of reach tall. to try and see like if the top of my ears are taller than Theo because I've never They been are because I'm a dwarf. <gasps> hey there, little brother. How's it feel being short, shorty? I seek out help. <laughs> <laughs> The only constant is change. <laughs> your your sister helps make the choice for you. Excellent. Uh, it does take some time, uh, Theo, but uh, Strixhaven is the home of the greatest magical minds in existence. Uh, and over time, they are able to restore you, but you go through a very awkward dwarf to Leon in puberty that takes, <laughs> that it's, it's just awful all <laughs> over again. You look like a simultaneously a dwarf that's too tall but a leonin that's too short like a dwarf that's too hairy but a leonin that might be a little mangy it's uh <laughs> it's rough it's rough nico stays with theo the whole time <laughs> however very appreciated you very much do get there eventually. And the rest of the year passes relatively uneventfully. The word of you all's exploits of all the things that you did uh, from the very day, first day of class to the very last, up to and including having saved the entire campus spreads far and wide. And you all are regaled as heroes by the end of year one. I make sure at the end of the year that the gift that I've saved up for Theo is um, I've been gathering up all of the, the hairballs that have been left everywhere because I imagine there's a lot of shedding going on as he goes through this puberty. And at the end, I've like bronzed a hairball and put it on a little plaque. Um, and I'm like, for surviving year one, there you go. Something that you can hang. So oh, I'm sorry, I didn't get you anything. That's okay. The, the look on your face at this very minute as I hand this to you is all of the things I need. I think you've been leaving <laughs> gifts all year. <laughs> I will say, uh, over the holiday break, going into year two, how do you all spend the break uh, in between? Like, what does Impa do with her time? Does she go home? Does she stay here? <laughs> does... uh, Impa studies wizard chess or dragon's chess. Yeah. Does Impa study with Rampart? <laughs> in secret. Wait, to surprise <laughs> Rampart or studies in secret with Rampart? No. <laughs> <laughs> on, on her own, in secret, right. is determined to get better than Rampart. <laughs> <laughs> I would say you've watched them play enough games. They really are a tactical genius at it. They're 50 50 in a fight, but they're really good at dragon chess. Perfect. <laughs> Uh, how does Mal spend the break? We don't, we don't gotta go back home, right? Like we can <laughs> stay here, right? Yep, there's an allowance for staying on campus if you want. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Cause I probably have a warrant out for my arrest back home and this place is kind of nice. So I think I'm gonna stay here. Um, Mal spends a, as much as it was not necessarily the most pleasant experience, Mal ends up going back to the swamp a lot because mm -hmm. there were those lightning bugs out there and those were super neat. And he's fascinated by them. And, and suddenly he's got all kinds of ideas. And so he's learned, he spends his entire break learning how to make friends with lightning bugs. Perfect. Do you try and lure Xanther out to the swamp on any of those excursions? I wouldn't use lure, but I would like <laughs> to think that um, the enthusiasm that Mal talks about his wanting to make friends with the lightning bugs 
whether that is enough to get Xanther to join me or not. Uh, maybe at the point in where I have finally made friends with some of these lightning bugs. And then one night uh, he just shows up and is like, look, 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 look. And I've just got glowing <laughs> lightning bug friends with me that are then like circling my head and circling my wings. And then we'll circle his head and circle his, his body. And I'm like, look what I did. Look at this. <laughs> is a fire genasi again he's literally covered in living flames and he looks and he says oh so you won't need me to light up your nights anymore oh. well i mean you've got fire these are lightning bugs i thought i'd bring bring a little bit of electricity if you you were bringing the heat <laughs> dot 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 nico <laughs> how does nico spin the break uh, Nico is doing a whole lot of practice for cheer, it's like working on jumps constantly. Um, I want to be able to do leaps to the top of the, the pyramid um, for when we come back next year. I am working on, uh, I'm practicing all of my wild shaping to make sure that it's me who's controlling it and that nobody else nearby is getting hit with chaos and that, that I'm not transforming. Theo again, even though it was really kind of nice to have him down on my level where I could give him a hug and it was not, you know, needing to be lifted up. Um, and I am doing a lot of uh, puzzles, practicing a lot of puzzles, new equations. I have my buddy I've been uh, in touch with for years now, and I continue to to practice. Do you make a point of trying to seek them out on campus? Yeah. That would be that would be something I probably would have done during the year. Just start to to figure out where they are, where they what what college they're. Oh, I know they're in Quandrix. So um, yeah, just trying to learn a little bit more about what they do and how they prepared. Perfect. And last but certainly not least, how does Theo spin the break there? Um, I would like to say that um theo does leave and, and is not on campus for the break mm -hmm. and i would prefer to probably keep that a secret from my fellow classmates the fact um, that you were gone was a secret or where you went no was a where i went was a okay. secret um, but i will i will gladly tell you in a in a message or a follow-up um you know what what theo yeah. was off doing but Absolutely. he is uh, he has an agenda is there Perfect. any way, <laughs> is there any way as he's packing to leave that I can get something out of Theo to find out where he's going? I'm you sure know, you could. <laughs> because, because, because Theo has so successfully eluded Mal this entire time, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, Theo, give me stealth with advantage against okay. Mal's investigation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, real quick, are we? I, I'm assuming we're using our regular. Our, yeah, our this level is two before. Characters? This is before you leveled up. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the investigation is still a zero, so here we go. Yeah, same. <laughs> Ooh, I got seventeen though. Oh, you, you won. <laughs> I got a ten. You don't have to tell me. You don't have to tell me anything. You don't have to say out loud. Just send him a send him a hint. You know. Um, yeah, or, or, or give a hint. Or, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's fine. With I have Mal a feeling knowing. Mal is probably going to tell everybody to some degree anyway. And if, so, is if, that true? If you tell, ask Mal not to say anything. Mal, Mal keeps secrets. Like, I think, for I would example, prefer... nobody else knows about our little book thing that's been going on at the <laughs> that, library. That is very true. That so, is very true. So yeah. you can so, you can trust so him. I I would prefer if uh, we play this out like Theo didn't know that Mal picked up on something. So okay. got it. Change anything on your side? Nope. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I'll I'll message you then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. 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 I Excellent. Um, hang on a second here. Uh, Can we just talk about Adam's lion hat? I didn't notice that. It's super cute. <laughs> <laughs> when I turned into a dwarf. I turned it all backwards. Nobody noticed. I I, I noticed totally... that you turned it backward, but I didn't notice yeah, what it was. I, when you I also back noticed that you turned it around, but not why. Yeah, that is that is all true. I, I couldn't make out that it was a lion, so bravo. I thought I you were just trying. making your head more aerodynamic. It's like yeah. cosplay. Yeah, it's true. Full credit. Full, full credit. credit to Adam for doing that, Thank and then Thank full you. credit what to Hope for noticing for? because I yep. double double full credit double full credit. Uh, when you all return for year two. One of the first 
tasks you have before you is um so i apologize i'm about to sneeze here that's why i'm waiting for dramatic pause because i know it's going to hit me at the wrong moment one of the first things you have to do is choose your college um that you are going to be a part of uh recall your options are lorehold prismari quandrix silver quill and witherbloom uh, Lorehold is the College of Archaeomancy. Uh, they are dedicated to history and culture in broad strokes. Uh, Prismari is the College of the Arts. Uh, Quandrix is the College of Numeromancy. They, uh, they concern themselves with mathematics, physics, logic, statistics, and other types of uh, mathematical sciences. Uh, Silverquill uh is the college of eloquence um they are performers they love words and things of that nature and last but not least witherbloom is the college of essence studies they are primarily focused on the sciences like biology ecology chemistry and also life and death so this time i will come back the opposite direction around the horn here what college does theo choose uh, lore hold without any question. Is there anyone else that is choosing lore hold? I believe Impa wanted lore hold, correct? Impa, yes. As you all make your way back to campus here, uh, once the word gets around that you all intend to choose a lore hold, uh, out when you all arrive there that day, there is a very nice banquet that is planned there. Uh, all of the utensils and pots and bowls and everything are all um, replicas of actual samples that they have here at, at Lorehole College. They would not be um, so uh, irresponsible as to actually eat out of a 6,000-year-old Netherese bowl, uh, but they will make you feel like you're eating out of a 6,000-year Netherese bowl. They explain to you all that the of the two deans, the Dean of Order and the Dean of Chaos, are all very, very proud to have you here. It is Augusta Tullis, the Dean of Order, who is a human being, professor of spirit studies, no less, walks up to you all while you are um, having your, your orientation luncheon. In Impa, you immediately feel like there is a small army of spirits near her. You don't see them, but you just feel their presence. And she walks up to you and she turns and she looks right at, Al at Alfred and just like nods and then looks at you and says, Oh, hello, Imba. You honor Lorehold with your desire to join our college in bows. And, and Imba bows as well, like, oh, all right, yes, yes, thank you, thank you. I've, I've been dreaming of this since I was very young and I can't believe I'm actually here. I'm just so excited. Oh, yes, I assure you, the adventure is just beginning, which is saying something for two that have had the adventures that you have had. Uh, Theo, good to yes. see you back at your full measure. I am very gracious for all of the university's help in the matter. Mm. I believe that uh, it was certainly to be expected given the fact that students were sent on a very dangerous quest on school grounds. Mm, we just wanted to see what you were made of. You all see a barrel-chested orc who looks like he belongs more in a pit fight. His face is scarred and nicked, but he is wearing immaculate robes, and you both know him to be the Lorehold Professor of Chaos, the Dean of Chaos. Hmm... You chose to go back to what you were, even though the will of the magic was that you change. That seems a bit of a safe choice and just very much claps you on the arm, Theo. But if that's your will, I don't know that you will be able to embrace changes necessary for Lorehold. Speaking of change, I believe that now we are joining the college that our library privileges are elevated to other restricted areas. Is this correct? Yes, yes, library. Well, 
and you see the other dean sort of, um, his name is Plarg, by the way. Uh, Augusta Tulis just sort of steps forward and is like, eh, yes, you will have access to all of Lorehole's facilities as long as, as well as unfettered access to the biblioplex. Um, there's also the matter of your uniforms. Uh, have you all decided how you wish to represent for our school colors? We have choices. Of course, you're not simple first years now. You can express yourself however you like. Oh, I, I never mean, thought of it. Right. Uh, well, hmm. uh, other, other options. I'm not very good. At, uh, I'm not very creative, that is. I'm, I'm bored. And Plarga turns and just stomps away. And <laughs> Professor Tulis just says, allow me to escort you all here. Uh, we have a, a number of... Um, <laughs> Options for spirit wear. <laughs> yes, come, 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 come. Yeah, and she just, she's much smaller than both of you and just takes you by the hand and leads you over to the area where you can buy some lore hole swag. Uh, Show me the books. <laughs> Nico, which college is Nico choosing? Quandrix. Hey, Quandrix. Hey. <laughs> Nice. Uh, Nico, again, uh, substance and theory are the pillars of Quandrix. And when you come in, it is a quite different experience for you. Um, there is a banquet of sorts, but it mostly is figuring, uh, featuring large boards with very complex equations uh, up on the boards. And as you're moving through the building, you find the students are equally mixed between discussing actually how to solve these equations and to what extent does it even matter? They're, they're very much philosophically engaged with it as well as practically. And Ibrahim, the Dean of Theory, who is an owlin, uh, walks up to you uh, very much. You've seen uh, Mel's feathers bristle with pride more than once. And although Dean Ibrahim uh, has a stern look on their owl and face um, in a very sharp eyes and a curved beak, you can't help but detect at least a small bristle in his feathers as he's looking at the new class of students. And he just looks at you and he's like, young Nico, welcome aboard. Yes, welcome to Quadrix. Thank you so much, Dean. I'm, I'm so excited to be here. There's so much here. It's me. Something. Ah, it is a lifetime of exploration inside these walls. It is true, some of our uh, fellow colleges, you also could spend your entire life never mastering the dichotomies that they represent. But here, in particular, both theory and practice are nigh inexhaustible. It's true, but the, that's that's the core of it, isn't it? That that they exist in tandem and in opposition. Oh, uh, yes, <laughs> quite, 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 quite. Actually, I do have some theories, and you hear someone say, please, don't bore the poor child to tears right out of the gates. And you see uh, a, an elven woman comes walking up to you, which you know is Kian, the Dean of Substance. Uh, she is wearing an al and a dress that is made out of golden spirals and fractals fractals um that flows all the way down to the floor it's like she is the embodiment of a uh, golden ratio and proportion as she almost glides up to you and she says ah, apologies young nico hopefully ibrahim has not put you off of joining our beloved quandrix Oh no, I'm I'm so excited to be here. There's so much and I've been I've been studying and I've been practicing and I've been I've been uh counting out as many different uh decimal points as I can of of different numbers and ratios. Well, I think one thing that we can both agree on here is what do you think is the most vital component of reality? The substance or the theory that underpins it? Hmm? And they are both staring at you. Oh, oh I mean, that's why I'm here, right? To learn. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very smart child. It's, we both know, however much we like to it, hate to admit it, that reality is in fact 
underpinned by oppositions. Um, there must be room for both how we both see things and how all the other colleges see things as well. Although I would just like to say, none of us would exist without substance. And she does like float away. And he's like, Burr! that is a mischaracterization. And he does turn and stalk after her arguing as well. That's some flair is what that is. <laughs> Mal, uh, which college does Mal intend to join? Mal has dyed all of his feathers blue as <laughs> his first day at Prismari is going to be fantastic, which is how I'm explaining the wild magic surge that we I was, got. I was, I was going to say, actually, you don't dye your feathers, Mal. You wake up on initiation day with blue <laughs> feathers, and it's Someone not 100% clear. You. Yeah. Was this Xanthers doing? Was this Theo's doing? Did the magic get away from you again? Whatever the reason Please is. Please speak Chris Mark. Please speak Chris Mark. He is so happy. Because be oh, I was going to do this, but I was afraid I was going to have to like bleach him first. And then that was going to be a whole thing. But like, look, look, Theo, look, I'm all ready for my first day of Prismari. Look at it. You don't find that rather odd? That, that just happened when you woke up? Oh, sure, it's odd, but like we're here, so it happens. <laughs> and I was kind of thinking about doing this I anyway. It was Maybe a dwarf I... for a time, yes. There you go. Maybe I thought this into being. That's what I'm going to go with. I thought Perhaps. my artistic expression into being, and that's how I'm going to strive. As all great into... artists do. Exactly, exactly. My thought became art. It was great. And that's how I arrive, is covered in blue feathers uh sure enough you see as you walk in multiple of your fellow students sort of ooh and ah it's your bold fashion choices uh, <laughs> here uh everyone uh, there is a broad ex ex spectrum of the ways that the arts are represented here there are people that are dancing uh, to music that apparently only they can hear. Uh, there are disembodied hands playing instruments. Some are painting pictures. As you see, students all over the place are grappling with their own um, attempt to balance perfection and expression. And as you are standing there watching a uh, young half-orc engage in some serviceable beat poetry, you feel a cool breeze um, in the air behind you as you turn around and you see, just like Xanther looks like he's partially made out of fire, she looks like she's partially made out of water. But the ripples and curls have done her hair up in an ever-changing and seemingly physical impossible uh, knot of tangles and waves. And she looks at you and her eyes uh, also like ripple, like the foam on the sea. And she says, isn't it perfect? Uh, you're going to have to be more specific. No, I'm not. Oh, okay. Well, then sure. Look about you. Is there anything that could be improved upon that your eye falls upon? Well, that guy's got his purse on the outside. He really needs to put his purse like inside his it's, coat because that's just, it's, it's, he's asking for it, really. You hear from across the room a man who also is a genasi but looks like he's partially carved out of rock says, It's a trick question, kid. Oh. Okay, I'll give a trick answer. No. Uh, Nazari's ruining my fun. Um, I'm Uvilda Mistcoiler, Dean of Perfection. And here is your first lesson as a Prismari, young Mal. All things are perfect because it is how they have manifested. They are the perfect thing that they must be to fill their function. You are exactly who you had to be to get to this point standing before me right now, as I am who I had to be to bring me here. As such, perfection. I really wish that you had told some of the people back in my old kip about that because, like, they didn't think I was perfect at all. I, I was told a lot of the time that I had stuff I needed to work on, huh? Well, Curveball, even their flawed taste was still perfect because it puts you on the path. Hmm? And Nasari, the Dean of Expression, also says, Art is subjective! <laughs> 
I, I mean, do you want to come on over and just join the conversation? You don't have to yell. No. But... Okay. I can respect that. Sure. Okay. Uh, I, do you we're, always just yell at each other? We're the sea and the shore. We come together, move apart. You understand. It's the... Even he stresses the limits of perfection, but I would still say that he still embodies them. Tell me, young Mal, um, what is your interest here with us? What is it that you hope to be able to experience or express as a Quantrix? Oh, the, as a Prismari, you mean? I mean, I, I kind of like I kind of like the the Quandrix people too, because like all the numbers and things. But I, I just don't have the I don't have the feathers for it. I can't count that high. Um, although I tried to, I was. So I've been I've been thinking. I've been working. Mm -hmm. I've been working on a thing. Mm -hmm. Look at this, and I hold out my hand, and uh, my fire, my lightning bugs all swarm into my hand, and they they make a little rough sphere of light. I'm like, ah. ah have you trained them, or are you controlling them with your mind? A little bit of both. You could just light a torch, but fine. Well, yes, but then I kill them, and and look, 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 watch, watch, and Mal concentrates really, really hard, and all the lightning bugs rise up and form a box. Ah, you ah. You see she leans in close enough that the light from the lightning bugs is reflecting in her eyes, and she just says, they are perfect. Ah, you hear that, everyone? She says you're perfect. Although we still got to work on your rhomboid. The rest of the day of your or your first day in your colleges goes wonderfully because again everyone knows you all and what you have done what you have achieved uh and word very quickly spreads of the schools that you all have chosen uh in later that evening you come back together again at the tavern and see each other in your new college regalia Hey everybody! Are, are we are we ah. drinking? Are we celebrating? Is that? I think celebration so, seems to be. Yeah, let's drink. let's drink. <laughs> more, more than just the coffee, right? And I pull out the crap of coffee. We're gonna need that for after. We're gonna need that for yeah. for tomorrow morning, probably. Yeah, um, yeah. Knowing how things have gone. Also, look at all of you looking fancy in your clothes. Do, do you really think so? These old uh, things. Yeah. Yeah, you're looking spiffy. I like it. Got the the red happening with the lore hold. It's just and the the white. It's, it's classy. It offsets your fur really nicely, Theo. I and didn't Impa. know it was my color, but I really am owning it. Yes. <laughs> Impa, the gray with oh, it's it's a, it's gorgeous. It's, it's just really like nice I always dreamed. It's a really nice look. I believe I'm supposed to reciprocate to uh, you look uh, wonderful in yours as well, Nico. Thank you. I'm really liking the tie. Uh, like that. That's just uh, thanks. Are those uh, is there like numbers on that thing? No, it's a it's a it's a pattern. It's if all the detail see, in that thing. There's these diamonds on here. So they repeat it. Beautiful. It's like a tessellation. I don't know what that word means. Tessellation. It's when you have sh objects or shapes that fit together precisely with one another and they can make so a whole pattern. tessellating. <laughs> oh, you think I could, you think I could teach the, the crew to do that? And I'll hold up my hand to get the lightning bugs going and th their sphere turns into like a, a, a pear. I'll start, I'll start drawing out or, or very, very like soft casting a bunch of my spells because my different spells have different, my, all of my absorb elements take the form of different tessellations as they shield and absorb so you can see like a snowflake tessellation that forms and you can see a fiery tessellation and so they're i'm sort of just mapping them for you so you can see how they might fit for your for your lightning bugs the bugs are really cool and they the way they bounce off of the robes and uh, the, the or that's oh that's your feathers yeah. you went all in i i, <laughs> I summoned color into existence and apparently i'm perfect i didn't even do you have, to come to do you school. have the red in there too or just the blue uh that that was kind of with the robes they gave me i just went for blue uh it looks great theo and impa give me perception checks <clears throat> uh am i smelling something 
when are you not <laughs> smelling something? <laughs> well, a lot is happening at the Bozin Tavern here, so it's more to see something okay. than to smell something. Yes, that is a six. That's a nine. Six. Sixty-nine. Nice. 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 Uh, Mel, uh, you give me a perception check. Oh, sure. We weren't high enough. So no, you're he's got to go nice yeah. person. Right, 18? Yeah. Uh, Mel, while you are uh, talking to Nico here, um, you notice both Impa and Theo are kind of nerding out about Lorehold stuff uh, that they saw <laughs> earlier today. And across the room, of course, campus is full. There's a whole new section of first years coming in, just like you all were what seems like a lifetime ago. But a lot of your friends and classmates are showing off their new college colors as everybody very clearly is kind of picking a side. I've gone over to and one of them and said, you need to make sure you look up if anything's dripping. There, there was an ooze. It was dripping. True. Bring mm -hmm. an umbrella. Umbrellas that's, are useful. That's just good life advice. Mm -hmm. and, and don't, don't. If if it has three rows of eyes, turn the other way. Run away. <laughs> as Nico, not everyone is, can be as cool as we are. <laughs> as Nico is imparting this hard won uh, wisdom and low key shade on these first years, you notice in the corner of the room there is a minotaur uh, that probably would have stood over seven feet tall but is shrunk as small as it possibly can be and it's holding a little book and it's got a pair of glasses that sit right on the tip of its snout and everywhere nico goes he's just watching her from the corner uh i'll look over at nico uh when she takes a breath in between all of this good life advice and i'll give her like a very very little shoulder bump and say Eh, you, you got a fan. You got a fan? See? Eh? So did did I connect with... You've been writing your correspondences, uh, but you have not met in person. You know that your that your uh, pen pal is incredibly shy and was very nervous about meeting you. Mm. I will, uh, Nico, give me flat wisdom. Not a save, just a wisdom check. Thirteen. Um, I would say you've noticed this person in the biblioplex before. You think they work in there uh, as you've come in and out, um, simply because it was strange to see something so big trying to be so small. You haven't seen that since Impa. Well, and, and Theo. <laughs> also, I suppose. Actually, it's not strange at all that you normally. Yeah, you're like, everybody you're like, I hang out with. I, I will say Rampart is going out of their way to be as big as possible, but True. everyone knows that down. So, yeah. so's, so's Mal, but he's having mm -hmm. less luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very it, tall it blue really out. does. It just it makes you look so regal, and you can you can still be very tall for an owl. In. <laughs> yeah, I can at least be wide. Like I puff out a little bit and I put out the wings. I can be super wide for an owl. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, it looks like you got a fan over there. You you know that one? Ah, uh, I. You want to go say I, hi? I think he's a, a, I mean, he's a Quandrix, but. You see, he sort of adjusts his glasses and see that the two of you are looking and immediately turns to attempt to flee, but is in a corner and is like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, now we got to go see the, the, the poor guy. I mean, yeah, come on. Uh, come hi. On. Hey, how how you doing? I'm Nico. Oh yeah, no, Nico. I, I yeah, Nico. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Could you speak up? Oh, I mean, uh, it's yeah, I, sorry, I just it's, it's hard um, to it's even the, though you're just well, oh, really um, you're really no, quiet. Uh, no, uh, sorry. Um, uh, I just I don't want to disturb people. You know, I'm always just sort of bumping in. Um, it's it, Nico. It's it's me. It's 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 me. Um um. Did and I he hear? just reaches in his pocket and pulls out one of your letters, which is tiny in his huge hand. Dragomir! And I go, I throw my arms around his neck and he's huge and I'm tiny. <laughs> hi, 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 Nico. Hi. hi! Oh, it's so good to actually meet you. I wish you would come and say hello in the last, you know, year I've been it's, here. I, I just, I mean, you were sort of saving the world every day and I just didn't want to bother you. you know, saving the things, world is, you know? I, I have a it, question. But, Who is but, uh, this? Uh... 
Who is this? Nico? Just, this this is just another cool Quandrix, Theo. This is Drashmir. He's really uh, he's a cool Quandrix, and you know. What is your interest in my sister? He works in the Biblioplex, Theo. You should know him by now. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Not Theo, my fault. I, you're not making new friends. Yeah, I've Theo. We've talked. We've, we've, no, we've talked repeatedly, Theo. I, I try and make sure that your pull list is always I ready because I know you were a sister. Like Theo, why are you being mean? <laughs> I, have I'm you been mean, mean. Theo? I'm, have you been mean Theo? I'm not trying to be mean. I'm simply I'm, making sure. I, I'm trying to get yeah, just, this individual to I'm, declare their intentions towards you. Well, you know, I know, like, ancestrally, ancestrally like, if, if cattle and lions don't get along, but I just thought it might be different between us. Cause, Listen, you know, you're, you're I have read enough books to understand when someone is trying to flirt, and I am oh, oh, trying to no, assess your intentions. Wait, are, is, 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 is he flirt? Are you flirting with me? Oh, okay. Uh, now it's awkward. That's weird. Um, I am not flirting with you. No, That's you not just how made it weird, Theo. Yeah. Hmm. This is the first time we've hmm. actually met. Why are you talking like you know each other so well, then? We and we've been um, we're and he, Quandrixes. He pulls out a handful of letters that you immediately a recognize. And the three as, years that we've been writing letters to each other. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Uh, Nico's well, ear sort of twitch. Well, I I was um I just I I wanted to um I, I just wanted to tell you that. Uh, did you guys hear about the Mage Tower game that's coming up? No. Um. Well, there's like a big game at the end of the year, and, and oh, the one gonna, we're cheering at. Uh, well, I, I was just like everybody is saying, you guys should should be a team because you'd win because you guys are incredible, <laughs> and you just have to register with Professor Sharpbeak. I think you guys remember her. You met her the day that you saved everybody from the mimic, and um. Mm -hmm. You, sh you just guys have to register and say that you want to be a team, and I'm, I'm sure you would win, because, Nico, I think you can do anything. I like Learning. this guy. This guy is amazing. Why have you not introduced <laughs> him Nico to us earlier? Nico has a, earlier. a streak exactly of white down the center of her face, and it just sort of goes beet red. Like, it goes, <laughs> it blushes pink. You Almost see, matches her hair. Even though he very much turns and doesn't look at you, he does like very gently reach out, which again, his huge hand and just kind of like holds one of your hands just like just a little bit. So, so this mage tower, how, how when you, when you growl like that, he visibly like even more. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody was saying something about mage tower. Sorry. Oh, this mage tower, this, uh, mm. tell us more about it. And just um, just to annoy Theo, I sort of scoot a little closer. <laughs> I sit down next to him and I... Uh, yeah, uh, he just got a three to maintain chill. So if you've ever seen a Minotaur blush, this is it right now. Yeah. And, and he's like, well, it's the Battle of Strixhaven. It's just, it's the big game. And like whoever wins um is they're heroes i mean you're already a hero but like they're the most popular kids in school and also they'll like they'll pay like half your tuition so there's like something in I'm it for winning too. <laughs> hey hey no wait go back to that whole paying thing because you know i i i, I don't work on uh i don't work on just you know applause alone okay so what what is this what what is it what is it i've yes, only what watched would you do? what would yeah. you do it sounds intriguing yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's the the game itself is like a little complicated. Um, so you 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 have to pick you have to pick a mascot, right? And then they pick a mascot, and you start at the other end of the stadium. And the objective is to get the other team's mascot back to your side. And and you can you can like use magic and stuff, but you can't hurt anybody, and you can't like cheat. And um, it, but it's really neat. And like, I think I think I think I think you'd be really great at it. And if um. And maybe maybe Professor Sharpbeak can tell you more because I'm a little nervous, although I'm glad that I finally met you, Nico, and I've been waiting for this for a really long time, and I think you're really cool, and your fur is a really pretty color, and you smell nice, but um, yeah, uh, maybe you should just go, go talk to her. <laughs> again, when you growl, he visibly shrinks again. <laughs> Theo, Theo, I think you and I and Impa should go and go find out more information about this 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 thing this thing and uh, leave these two to for the reunion because you know they haven't seen each other in ever and they deserve a chance to like talk and things in person instead of in, in letters. So I think the three of us should go. Right? Oh, we can we can we can. I, I kind of look over at him and I see how uncomfortable he is. And I'm very familiar with this because I'm friends with Impa. 
I'm roommates with him, but and I am I'm related to Theo. And so I know that at a certain point you don't want to overload someone who's in that state. So I, I think I'm going to go to uh, you know, Drashmir, let's um let's catch up later. You know. Uh, uh, he just um he reaches into his robes and pulls out a sparkling blue rose uh that has the same fractal pattern as your tie. I got the book. Hands it to you. Make this Mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I believe in you. Are you doing like art (laughs) gummy on the fly? This is like real time. (gasps) There it is. Hey, I made made Jason Charles Miller sing a song about it with dragon names on the fly. This is a boom, done. There you go. Pro. Full credit. Full credit. 100% credit immediately. (laughs) Or gummy on the fly. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, both and neither, Jen Kretschmer. <laughs> Crap comedy. There it is. <laughs> Heartbreaker. <laughs> <laughs> I just want y'all to know that was not rehearsed. You just watched nope. that happen in real time, by mm-hmm. the way. She was in like, I, she's like, I got you, dog. Yeah. Now the Perfect. tie came with a pocket square. That's amazing. Uh-huh. Bravo. Again, full credit. Full credit. Even if it doesn't hold, full credit. Uh, I'll find a way. When you when he sees that Nico pins it, uh pins it in her hair though, you definitely see just like full anime eyes open up as he sort of adjusts his spectacles and he just says, Um, maybe maybe now we don't have to just write to each other. Maybe we could like talk in person and stuff. If, yeah. Like you want uh, to. yeah, yeah, yeah. My 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 room is up, and I give him a number that I think all of the the, <laughs> the dorm room numbers are um, Fibonacci spiral um, sequential numbers. So I'll give him whatever my particular. <clears throat> yes, Do you need uh, some water, uh, 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 Theo? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I think I need to go. Well, yeah, just uh, keep in mind the, that the, the RAs prowl at all hours of the night, and I happen um, to be one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but um, he's he's roomy with me, and I have to tell you that he's up like late looking at books. He, don't now, have to worry. He, he, well, he, we live he, in our dorms now, don't we? He, he reaches in another pocket. Actually, you all were given the choice if you wanted to stay together or move. You do. You were given an option. Oh, okay. uh, although he does reach in and he pulls out a uh, uh, something that is wrapped in wax paper and just like hands it to you with a trembling hand, Theo. I love him this? so much. You will not curry any favor with me. Uh, Is it's it a curry? Book, it's a book you've been looking for for years. Um, oh. And Nico, you know that in one of your very first letters, you mentioned the fact that you were on the search for an edition because you knew your brother wanted it, but you've had mm-hmm. no success. But he has it, and he's just he giving it to you. found it. Oh, mm-hmm. I adore him. All right, what was your name again? <laughs> um, Drezemir. Dr- Drez- Drezemir uh, Yamask. Just, 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 right. just, just, just Drasimir. Uh, I didn't need all that info, but Drasimir, it's, uh, I suppose it is um, somewhat pleasurable to meet you. And um, mm. uh, c- carry on now, carry on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, I'll, yeah, Nico, we'll just, I'll just, we'll, we'll catch just, up. Nice, nice to, to meet all, all of you. Hi, uh, Im- Imba. And she Imba. gives his hand a little squeeze as before we walk away. <laughs> He looks at you, Impa, and he goes, uh, sorry, I talk so much there. I, I kind of soak up all the air in the room sometimes. I know. I just, I, sorry, I mean, it's, it's okay. You, you can't help it. You know, it's just some people who like that, you know? <laughs> um, I, you, I like your glasses. And he just kind of scurries away. <laughs> <laughs> as, as much as like a seven foot, 450 pound minotaur can scurry. <laughs> He's away. Uh, do you all go see Professor Sharpie? Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's find out about this Mage Tower game. So, uh, recall, uh, Professor Sharpbeak is the one who uh, leapt to your uh, assistance after you all fought the Mimic, and she's also the one that gave you all the Platinum piece as a way of saying thank you. Uh, oh, sh- she is an Owlin, and when you come into her office, you see her... Um, um, she comes in when and you all uh, tell her that you want to file your paperwork, and she says, uh, <clears throat> "Yes, who? Ah, 
You all, yes, yes, yes. Um, how about you join me outside for a little walk, hmm? Then we can deal with all this paperwork. Okay, that sure. sounds weird, but all right. I mean, uh, it's always good to uh, chat with you. We, Mal, we are Owlin. We're not meant to be caged in, right? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Hmm. Lead on, yes. I follow. Yeah. Oh, look at all of you. So smart in your college colors. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, and as you all walk outside and you get just out of earshot of the biblioplex, she says, um, <clears throat> it is fortunate that you found me now. Uh, this Mage Tower game is my event to organize, but everything's going a bit wrong. Um, you see, I need to tag the college mascots on campus. Those little magical creatures that roam the grounds, we use them as the mascots for our Mage Tower games. Um, if the deans find out that some of the mascots aren't cataloged, my reputation will be ruined. Um, so before classes began, I corralled the mascots on an island in Sedgemore. But before I finished cataloging them, a uh, half dozen or so... Sedgemore again? They escaped. Well, you know, this morning... I heard students ch chattering about mascots causing a commotion on the outer on the outer grounds of Wiltroot Hall. And yes, you all have spent some time in Sedgemore, so um, I was just thinking. Um, she reaches in her robe and pulls out a bag and says, each of them have to be tagged with these bands, but I can't do it myself. With the start of classes, I am buried under work. I see how you've handled yourselves firsthand, might I add, and I am impressed with your skills. Um, could you please head to Wiltroot Hall on Witherbloom's campus and discreetly slip these bands on every mascot you find? I'd be so grateful. What's more, I'd owe you a favor, and you all know what my favor can entail. Uh, what do you say? I'm sorry, you said discreetly. Are you sure you want us to do it? Ah, ha, 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 ha. Why is Impl she laughing? I don't you understand. are as funny as you are beautiful. Oh, all right. Also, so I seem to remember your favor last time came with a platinum piece, which I really appreciated. There are many, there are ways to show favor that you're not purely coin, but if that is what you decide, I'm sure it could be arranged. Access. I want access to the part of the biblioplex that other students are not allowed. One <laughs> if, hour. If only you had just met someone who could give you access to places in the bibli biblioplex and were nice to them. No, that uh, it's a shame. Pharrell or whatever his name was uh, does not uh, does not have access to the place that I am talking about, Professor. <laughs> You know the one. One hour. We put little bands on the little mascots in one hour. In the secret place, Professor. <laughs> she just sort of looks down and she says, <clears throat> "I assist me in this, and I believe um, we may be able to um, arrange something. Very well. Gross. It's what she looks to do out on the plains. She holds up her hand and prestidigitation goes off and cleans it and she just shakes it. Hmm. Quite, 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 quite. Um, again, um, shouldn't be too difficult. They should not be dangerous at all. They're just cute little things. I'm sure you've noticed them. Um, but you do recall the last time there was a scorpion out there. You shouldn't have to uh, perhaps killed me i was reincarnated as a dwarf do you remember that time so you probably don't have to go into the swamp at That's all better. it'll be more like wilt root hall possibly In very how well. discreet are we talking like like no one ever saw us or like they saw us but they don't know it was us or it's okay if they saw us and we were doing the thing, we just plausible deniability kind of thing. I, I think maybe maybe they just mean that we shouldn't burn anything down. Oh, okay, yeah. that's That it's, goes without saying. It, no destruction. And ideally, no one knows that I had to lean upon you to assist me in this matter. Okay, plausible deniability. So we mm. can be caught, but we just can't divulge your name. All right. Yeah, mm. my, my beak is sealed. Let's go. Mm. Um... So Good what luck. are the mascots we're looking for? What are they? What kind of creatures are they? 
so there are now I'm about to choke to death. Hang on a second. No joking. No dying. <laughs> Don't do that. We already had one you, death today. That is true. And I do not want to reincarnate as a dwarf. You don't want to be a dwarf. <laughs> that'd be, that'd be do not change. recommend it. That's half of the B day if we have. <laughs> that is true. Go down half of out. the B day with all of the mass. <laughs> Sponge SpongeBob dwarf pants. Um <laughs> So, uh, something you all have seen by now, um, especially now that you've spent some time on your individual college campuses, are there are all manner of little creatures uh, that tend to manifest around the campuses. Uh, except for Witherbloom, they are all intentionally created. For Lorehold, you all have spirit statues. Uh, they are literally... Uh, little constructs uh, that look like they might be made out of a rock that is animated uh, with a glowing electricity through them or things of that nature, but they're, they're little constructs. Uh, you might have, for Prismari, there are little air elementals. For Quandrix, there are fractal mascots, which are small constructs also that... Um, oftentimes look like they might be creatures that are made out of uh, crystalline shapes and things like that, that all kind of come together in a vaguely uh, animal-like outline. Uh, there are inklings for silver quill, which are little black oozes um, that can uh, jolt around and do things. And Witherbloom has pests that usually manifest in the size of things like gigantic fireflies or worms that are uh, the size of your arm, like caterpillars and things. Or scorpions. But, or, well, no, usually not the scorpions, uh, but for they are um, generally harmless. Mostly harmless, one could Mostly say. harmless, yeah, mm -hmm. right. Right, which is partially dangerous. How many bands yeah. do we have? Six. And what was Lorehold? Uh, Lorehold. Spirits, like constructs. Spirits. Yep. Oh, right, sorry. Uh, I just sent you a little link here. If you if you hover, it won't show you, but if you click through, it will show you an example of each of those things. The link I just sent. Uh, and yes, she says to go look for them on the Witherbloom campus. All right, let's go do the thing and then get back because, you know, there's going to be more parties that are going on because the, the school year just started. And I want to go do the thing and get get Theo his his time alone with the books. And then, you know, then we can continue with the drinking. Yep. Um, despite its location on the outer grounds of Witherbloom College campus, Wiltroot Hall is normally a safe locale. A lot of normalies being thrown around here. Um as you all uh, come, uh, again, I've, uh, uh, I've given you the map of this area. Uh, the Witherbloom Hall is a gigantic tree uh, that sprawls out uh, on the edge of the campus. And there are paths that spring out from it, uh, connecting it to other um, classrooms and just um, little uh, gazebo-ish areas and, and external buildings. Um, so as you all make your way out here, you basically have two different things that you have to accomplish. The first one is you got to find them, uh, and there's six of them. And then the second thing is you have to tag them. So where would you like to start? Uh, quick question. Mm -hmm. Have we, have we leveled up at this point? Yes, absolutely. Okay. You're a level four, in fact. Ooh. Oh, awesome. four. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Because are these creatures or objects? Both. Uh because some of them are constructs and some of them are living things. Okay. So um Theo is going to uh start to let me see what the casting time is on that real quick. Oh, so it's just one action. Um mm -hmm. so he is going to say, Well, I think it's only appropriate that I can find where the uh, lore hold mascots are to be discovered and uh, starts to cast locate object. Uh, let me just check one thing here. And also, because mm -hmm. we are not supposed to get caught here, I'm going to go ahead and throw pass without trace on all That's of us. Good idea. Um, <laughs> so there is a, a shadowy veil that comes out. Uh, from Nico um, and it sort of coils in in these um, concentric circles swirling inward 
and wraps around everyone and then vanishes. Uh, or I, it continues to surround us and mask our, our movement, but it's using this almost prismatic, like the, the way that light glints off of a crystal to, to hide us. Absolutely perfect. Give me, I'm just checking one thing here. As you might imagine, I'm jumping all over the place. Um, perfect. Um, you, Theo, uh, know immediately, if you have the map uh, there, that you all are essentially coming in in area W1. Uh, you know there is a spirit statue in area W6 on your map. W1. Mm-hmm. Where's W1? Oh, I, will, I, I will say W1, which is right in the opening, is the trunk of an enormous dead tree rises nearly 100 feet into the air. Near the ground, the wide trunk has been hollowed out and carved to form doors, windows, and a spacious learning center. Surrounding the tree is a wooden platform that overlooks the bog and walkways beyond. And it is empty. Uh, may or may not be oddly empty. It's just the first day, so maybe classes aren't on yet. But you would have thought that maybe you should have seen someone here. Hmm. Well, maybe it's a good thing that today is just like a weird day and let's take advantage of it and your awesome spell. And let's go sneak up on this on this, uh, yes, this thing. At least for the lore hold mascot, it will be located that direction. And you see Theo uh, casting the spell requires a forked twig. So mm -hmm. like a dousing rod. <laughs> so he's just uh, this way. And he's kind of just ambling about with the stick out in uh, front of him and, uh, and just keeps concentrating uh, on that spell and um it I, I doubt that i have seen these up close before which is one way the spell can work but mm -hmm. um, if you know like a specific a type of something uh it will it mm -hmm. will also uh, alert you to that so he just starts walking toward uh wherever uh he, he mm -hmm. is getting that reading from as you all head uh which is roughly southeast from the center um towards area w6 two lumps of slimy vegetation and moss stand prominently in the northeast corner of this clearing and you see the lumps start to bubble and gurgle and you hear disturbed i am disturbed as a large mossy form starts to stand up out of the mud and the muck and all you're the disturbed <laughs> roll initiative again ah. since you rolled so poorly last time i'm gonna give you another shot at this here oh. <laughs> might not matter huh that is <laughs> a natural one you know Oof. impa uh, what, what what is that total for impa then a one <laughs> You know, oh, no. they keep getting you out here in the swamp, Emma. You know, they keep getting you. Uh, Theo? Uh, it's a 13. All right. Uh, Mel? 15. And Nico? 18. Oh, sorry, 20, 20, 21. Oh. Excellent. Uh, same thing. The, the, the lightning heron gone goes first. Uh, yes. Yes, I do. Um, I... Sheesh. Um, would Entangle do anything to them? Would I be in control of their? I mean, being? it's hard to say, but it looks like it's made out of plants. So, well, what I'm wondering is if I can basically wrap it around stuff nearby instead, like kind of unweave the creature. Uh, you don't know if that would work, but it'd be worth a shot. I'm gonna give it a shot. Okay. And I mean, you could tangle plants in plants. That, in the worst case scenario, we get difficult terrain. That is true. It's a good first uh, step. It does seem like the plants leap up and start to wrap around it and seem like it's going to hold it in place. Uh, does Great. entangle grapple or restrain? Uh, it is restrained. Perfect. Uh, it seems like it is all wrapped up. And you see the mound kind of separates into two heads. 
and just keep saying disturbed, disturbed. Why are you so disturbed? What's wrong? Uh, it does not answer, though. Anything else from Nico? Um, I'm going to go ahead and cast uh, Shillelagh uh, with Perfect. my bonus action. Perfect. Uh, excellent. Uh, now it is... Uh, hold on, let me just double check one thing. All right. Uh, it is Mal's turn. Uh, Mal, who is always ready for battle, turns to the swarm of lightning bugs that seem to just constantly follow him around. Although when we were trying to be stealthy, a lot of them were hiding inside mm -hmm. of his, his feathers and everything. But mm -hmm. as they come floating on out, um, did you know that the name for a collection of fireflies or lightning bugs is either... Um, they're either a sparkle or a light uh -oh. posse. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be a light posse. I mean, especially if you're going into a fight, it's got to be a light posse. So Mal turns to his posse and says, let's get him. And I'll go fly straight at this thing. I'm going to attack him with my swords. <laughs> you have advantage because it is it is restrained. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. Me and my I posse. hope you have some holes poked in your feathers. Nat 20? <laughs> that is a nat 20. Yes! <laughs> All right, this is gonna be fun. This uh, is ridiculous. All yeah. right, so so here come the my swords are gonna do ten piercing damage. Mm -hmm. uh, this thing is now my favorite foe, mm -hmm. so I get to do another two d four, which is gonna be another six. Um, I think it's also piercing damage, and then mm -hmm. my posse mm -hmm. is going to fly into battle, and. <laughs> Uh, because they are going to do an extra 1d6, but of course I rolled a crit. Mm -hmm. So uh they're gonna do another eight piercing damage. So I, don't I... Know how a firefly is damaging. This is uh, they're stinging flies. Yeah. They're, they're the little little tiny mouths, little little tiny <laughs> mouths, but there's a lot of them. So I just come down with my sword like right in this creature's chest, and then all this extra damage swarms around me, and I'm face to face with this thing, and I'm like, well, now you're really disturbed, okay? As Mal slams his sword into the first one, you see one of the heads goes limp and the cloud of fireflies goes towards the head of it and starts chewing. And you see this whole planty mass just falls backwards and collapses. Blah. And Theo, you see a little pair of glowing eyes under a nearby bush looking at you. That's excellent because I was going to say that I was furiously investigating to figure out <laughs> where the mascot is. Um, yeah. And so um, as um, I have visual now, I, you know, quickly but carefully tuck uh, the forked twig uh, back into my component pouch. And then um, I uh, am just going to uh, take off and trying to capture it and trying to put a band on this. I don't know what that entails. But, but, uh, uh, I'm, I'm quite bored of behaving as Professor Shawbeek says. From now on, I'm nothing but mischief. I'm a free spirit. Uh, you you will come and you will get this band on you and you will like it. You ah, will come oh, back what? and behave yourself. Hmm? Yes. Yeah. You can't make me. You can't make me. I most certainly can. I was the terror of the entire savannah. I killed hundreds in battle, little one, and I mm -hmm. will not hesitate to stomp on you like just a bunch of gravel. Uh, he's like... telling the truth. And Less then I let out a daunting me. roar. Uh, what does daunting roar do? So I hope that my character sheet has this still because I changed mm -hmm. briefly to a dwarf. Uh, so hopefully <laughs> it updated properly. But um, bonus action. Mm -hmm. um, creatures of my choice within 10 feet can uh, must succeed a wisdom saving throw or become frightened until the end of my next turn. The DC is 13. Uh, you see it says, hmm. Yes, well, I don't care how fearsome you are. You can't get me to come out from under this bush, so meh. I go into the bush. <laughs> I dive into the bush, head first. Uh, give me athletics or sleight of hand. Oh, man. Oh, okay, <laughs> athletics. I am mm -hmm. at least trained in that. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, eight. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you uh you see you dive towards this thing and you land just out of reach and it reaches out and it touches your head theo don't touch my head and you see a flashback to the last battleground you were standing on and it takes his hand off and it just looks at you and says oh ooh, you weren't lying well then i very much should evade you and it goes running through the bushes you all can see the <laughs> as it is like as a reaction the bushes. Uh -huh. hang on um let me see how this goes because i would like to how far away is it uh, it's within 10 feet of you. I mean, it, it's like tangled in, in like things and it's so little that it's hard to see, but it's very close. I to mean, you. I have a my rapid hop. I could leap over to try and block its path as a reaction. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a, it's a bonus action. Never mind. I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. My mistake. The other one's a reaction. That is okay. Um, anything else? Anything else from Theo there? Uh... No, he he's he's going to start. Yeah, uh, it, it went that way, and he's like pointing uh, in the direction I, I, that it's. Going. I, I'm I'm a glowing source of light in the swamp, but you cannot stop me. I'm a free spirit. Uh, you see, he is oh, running, though. Run, running around. I love him. Uh, uh, Impa, it is your turn. Do, do, do you know? Um, um, I've learned this from the dead. Um, what free spirits are really don't like um it's being blind and deaf Pew! <laughs> and i'm gonna cast blindness deafness on it perfect so, con save 13. i i i appreciate you like i love it so much anyway <laughs> <laughs> uh you see it stops for a second and the lights sort of go out and it just goes <laughs> major look and it runs <laughs> <laughs> further under the bushes. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We gotta catch six of these or something. How many of them gotta get? <laughs> there maybe are they won't all them. be so annoying. Uh, you know, maybe well, some know. of them will be okay. Yeah, but this, I can say for certain that the five of you are quite annoying. Yep. Uh, <laughs> anything else from Impa? No. Uh, Nico, it is your turn. I... <laughs> oh. <laughs> I see this creature running away from me mm -hmm. and I think and I go, well, the world is a globe. Everything is a circle. Everything comes back to the beginning. And I reach out and I cast Vortex Warp. Okay. Um, so it needs to make a constitution saving throw. Uh, and if it fails, it will be teleported to an unoccupied space of my choice that I can see within range. I'm just going to bring it back to the beginning, uh -huh. <laughs> back to the bush. I mean, uh, back to the bush, or do you want it to be, like, in your hand? Well, hmm. I mean, yeah, I can do that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Can yeah. you just grab it? Okay. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I didn't know if I could take the action. That grab. sounds like a made-up <laughs> spell. <laughs> <laughs> but I like it. Very, you see everything sort of shimmers and just like this little construct and a handful of sticks just like appears right in front of you and it begins squirming mercilessly, Nico. Just... Hello, my name is Nico. What's your name? Uh, 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 free spirit. Free spirit, it's lovely to meet you. Now, I'm sorry my brother was being scary. Can we have a, just a quick conversation? I think it would be really, really wonderful. If B. Davis channeling his inner child. That, yeah, that I, I, I have experienced this squirm more than once. The spine goes out. Squirm. Squirm. <laughs> You're like, how are you even bending this way? Like a jelly of no bones. <laughs> yeah, like, and if I were to drop you, you'd be hurt so badly. That's the thing, yes. Um, Nico, give me a persuasion check. Uh, may I use uh, guidance on? Oh no, it's I've already used a spell this turn. Never mind. Mm -hmm. uh, Persuasion. Nope. 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 That would be a three. <laughs> In Nico, you just see it saying, "You will never take me without my consent. Consent is sexy." Um, I completely agree, sexy. which is why we have not put anything on you <laughs> hold, hold without on. your agreement. Um, I want to. Mm -hmm. So that's an ability check. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, Theo, as a reaction, wants to use chronal shift, mm -hmm. and so you see that timeline. Uh, he, he's just like, <laughs> and he's like kind of weaving something. It looks like he's winding time back just slightly, and then uh, Jen is going to get a reroll. You see, it looks so weird watching this thing like squirm in reverse, and then it just stops and looks, and it's like, but well, that's just cheating. Oh, that's a natural 
natural 20. <laughs> hey. The timeline hey, strikes again. <laughs> I, I love that Adam now gets to foresee Jen's moment. I, it's the best it's, thing ever. It's, it's it's all come back around. And it, like I said, everything's like, full circle. It goes in full yeah. circle. It stops and it's like, well, clearly, I suppose that you, you, you I suppose you have to tag me and take me back to Professor Sharpbeak, huh? Yeah, just just yes. Come come participate in the event. It sounds like a lot of fun. <sighs> So he hey, walks he, over and puts the we band. might be we might be one of the teams if we are the, you know we'll, we'll keep mm -hmm. in mind that you were oh, lovely uh, and cooperative but, uh, and uh I, I was both lovely and cooperative and quite you agile. if you if not for your supreme arcane power and his blatant manipulation of linear time i don't know that you ever would have caught me it's it's true i i mean and that's how it we would have taken it. us 30 seconds to, longer but yes <laughs> It holds out its hand and allows itself to be tagged. And you notice the moment that you tag it, it sort of calms down visibly. Like, ooh, ooh. Hmm. That's you okay not, there? Not quite sure what got into me there. I'm not usually quite such a free spirit. I, Were you doing I mean, I, something different than you usually do? Is it the, uh, the place? Is well, the... I sort of arrived in existence earlier today so i don't necessarily have a major point of reference but i know that i i felt sort of um compelled to misbehave before in a way that i don't now hi hello hi hey that hey. must explain what's going on with mal all this time uh mal <sighs> is still like digging through the remains of this creature that he completely destroyed and every once in a while holding up a twig to to one of his posse going ah, you, this one nah we, okay you, this one you, nah you just uh, yeah that must be you, it you see it sort of looks down at your hands nico and it's like um if i may i promise i shall behave properly if you would just um yeah absolutely. release me it immediately flies across and just hugs on your trunk, Impa, and just says, Bah! Lore hold! Lore hold! Lore ah, hold! Oh, Lore oh, hold! Oh. Lore hold! Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and there, I thought having, we were friends. having acquired your first mascot of six, I think is a good place for us to stop. <laughs> I like that we just had the Phlox sibling pout. <laughs> I thought you were my friend. <laughs> <laughs> also that other guy, sure. But yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm wearing the robes right here. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. That sounds wonderful. I cannot wait to see what happens with the other five Thank you all for joining us this evening. It has been a blast. As always, this incredible cast, this uh, group of friends, uh, just love playing with all of you uh, week in, week out. Thank you so much for being a part of this. And thank you uh, who, who are viewing this uh, for uh, being there along with us on this adventure. We will be back next week for part five of this eight part series. Hope just, everyone has a good one. Oh, yeah, I just have got? one quick thing to say after credit scene. Ooh, Mal, here we go. Yeah. As you were digging around in this refuse in mm -hmm. Detritus, mm -hmm. you see the lightning bugs form an arrow pointing into the bushes. Oh, always trust the posse. I go in the direction of the lightning bugs. And you peek your head through and you see a unicorn that is up to its neck in quicksand and just rotates and looks at you and says, Hey, buddy, little help. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> that was, I'm so glad you snuck that wild magic in at the end. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Later, Gators. <laughs>